Hello, and welcome to Crafting With You. In today's video, I'll be showing you how to make this loop yarn blanket. It's not only super easy, but it produces amazing results. So if you'd like to make this blanket, please follow along with me. So let's get started. This is the pattern for the cable knit or the body portion of your blanket. I know there's only five rows shown here and that's not indicative of how wide or how tall your blanket's gonna be. I just want to show you what the repeat of the pattern was. My blanket is 60 loops wide, which is about 43 inches, and the height is 64 rows, which works out to be about 54 inches. If you'd like to add the border to your blanket, it adds two inches to each side. So in total, it'd be four inches for the width and four inches for the height. I do want to do a little disclaimer here. These loop yarns, depending on the color and the brand, the thickness is very different across all the colors. So when I say mine is 60 loops wide and about 43 inches, depending on what color you choose to make your blanket, it could actually be a little thinner or wider and the row height could be taller or shorter. It just, I don't know why they don't make this uniform, but I just want to let you know. So you might want to do like a little test run to see what it adds to your blanket, like do 60 loops, measure it. If you want it a little bit wider, you can make it wider. So if you do want to increase your blanket width, you'll have to do it in multiples of two to make this pattern work. So please keep all of this in mind as you start your blanket. Here's the pattern just by itself. So if you want to do a screenshot or pause on this as you make your blanket, please feel free. So let's start the body or the cable knit portion of your blanket. Count out one, two, and this will be your weave in yarns and we won't be using these. We're gonna do only 10 loops for the sake of this video because I can't do 60 loops on camera. So one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, 10, and this will be your first row. Now, if you look at the pattern, the first row, you're knitting this way, right? So with your 11th loop, so this is gonna be your loops for your next row. Take the 11th loop, thread it through the 10th loop. Then you're gonna use the next one and thread this through the next one. Go from behind to the front and pull up. You're gonna repeat this until you get to loop number one. Remember, don't use these two. Okay, this is the last loop in the row. Pull up on all the loops to make sure they're in there tight. And now we're gonna start our row two. If you look at the pattern, the first row we went this way, next row two, we'll be knitting this way. And if you see the pattern, there are two loops and they appear like this. And the blue one is on top of the white one. That's because for every two loops after this, there are pairs. You're gonna be crossing the left loop over the right loop just like this. So here you go. You have your left loop and your right loop and you're gonna cross the left over the right just like this. So what I like to do is I like to hold this loop with my thumb and third finger and hold this with my index and I find that works for me. So you're going to take the next loop on your yarn and first thread it through this one. Just like this, pull up, take the next loop on your yarn and then thread through this one. Just like this, pull up. So when you're done with your first pair, it should look like this. That one goes that way. So with the next two, exact same thing, left over right. And what I find makes it easier is because you're knitting this way, this left one's always gonna go over your right. So, you know, don't get confused, this way. So hold it like this, take the next loop in your yarn Thread it through the back to the front. Take the next loop, thread it through the back to 
the front, pull up. Okay, and there you go. And repeat with all the loops in your row. So I'm done with the row two, and you'll see how this row one was a straight knit, and the row two was a crossover, so each loop tilts to the side. Now you're gonna repeat this, this row plus this row, every two as you go up until you get to the height of the blanket or the body portion that you'd like. I'm gonna do a few rows for you so you can actually see the pattern and I'll be right back. I completed five rows so you can see what the pattern looks like. It's of course a straight, across, a straight, across, a straight. And this is a very nice cable knit pattern. It looks just very similar to what you would do if you knitted or crocheted. Now, of course, this blanket is gonna take multiple balls of yarn to create. So when you get to the end of one ball of yarn and you need to join another ball, I'll show you how to do that. To join another ball of yarn to this, make sure you have at least two loops here at the end. Um, if you have more yarn, just go ahead and cut it right here, but keep two. Now you're gonna get your new yarn and you're gonna start at the end that the tail yarn is at. So since I ended here, I'm gonna start looping on this side. So I have a long tail on mine already, but if you don't, if it's like this, make sure that you count out two loops and you start with this third one. Now this last row that I left off on was the just regular stitch row. Then I'm gonna start with the crisscross. Just Go with the pattern like you never had a different color. If this row right here was the crisscross row, you would just do the regular pull through the loop. So since this is a crisscross, I'm gonna do the left over right, start with a third loop, just knit like you would normally knit if you didn't even change your color. So pull through, pull through, pull up. Next two, cross over, pull through, pull through, pull up. So you see, you would knit the rest of these. At the end, you would just tie these two with a double knot and then weave them in. Easy, right? To create a border for your blanket, you're gonna to have to create loops across three sides of your blanket. There's already loops up here, so this side is really easy. So take the yarn that you're gonna do your border with, and if you don't have a tail on it, you're gonna count out one, two, and start with this loop. Start with the second loop from the end. So you're gonna start on the end that has your tail yarn. Second loop, and you're gonna loop like normal for this first top row. So one, two, this one, three. So loop over like this. It's a little more challenging for the other three sides, but you know what? It's not that hard. If I can do it, you can do it too. So here we go. We're almost done. When you get to the corner, actually the corner on every side here, you have to do an increase. And the reason we do an increase is that when we start knitting across our blanket, the area gets wider. And if you don't have enough give, the blanket will start curling up like this. I learned that the hard way. So it took me a couple of tries to find out what the correct number of increase is. So what I figured out was an increase of two loops per corner. So if this is the normal knit that you would do just one loop, right? Add two more to here. So just take your loop, put another one through this hole like this. So now you have two, take another one, thread it through here again, and now you have three. So that's an increase of two. Now you get to the side and you have no loops, but it's okay, you just create your own loop. So let's trim this this way. You know the number of rows you have, right? As you were knitting, you just need to add the same number of loops down here. So when you do a straight row like here, it's easy. You just put it through 
this one yarn. So take a loop, thread it through, and you have that right there. When it comes to these crisscross rows, you would think to put it into this yarn, this first one, but no. I like a little cleaner look. There's a little yarn underneath. If you lift it up, it's right under here. Thread it through that one. It just gives a nicer look, I feel like, because if, if you don't do that and you put it through here, it's gonna pull on this and it just might skew the blanket a little bit. So this row is one of the straight rows. Easy, pull it through this one right here. This is the crisscross row. Lift up this yarn right here. There's yarn right there. Thread it through there. Now you get to the corner again, you're going to do the increase of two. So here's one loop, two loops, three loops, and you have a two loop increase. You get to the very bottom, this is your starting row. You're just going to actually do one loop across every two yarns. Then you get here, you do your increase of two, you get to this side, and you do one loop per row, and then you get to the first loop right here that you started your row with. That Oh, actually, yes, this one. You'll do the increase by two and to have three. So when I come back, I'll show you everything all completed. Here are all the loops added to start my border. I did the increase of two on each corner and I created loops across every row. Now, when you start this, I'd like to call this, they, you know, there's no word for it. I just thought it looked nice, I did it. A twist knit, I guess. So what you do is, this will be the first one. I take this and I'm going to twist it a full turn. So I like to, and make sure you do the twist in the same direction, the same. Don't do one direction and the other. So I like to twist it to the right. So if this is the loop, one, two, because when you do that one turn, it's only half a turn. So this is a full turn. Take your loop and knit it. Next one, turn, turn. Take your next loop and knit. So let me give you a close up of what I just did. This is your loop, turn, that's a half turn. This is a full turn. Take your loop back here, thread it through, pull up. One more time, that's a half turn, that's a full turn. Take your next loop, thread it through, Pull up. It gives a kind of nice little twist pattern to it, which I think I think is really nice. So go ahead and do that across all of all of this. I almost forgot to tell you the corners. You need to do an increase. So let me show you how to do that. So here you have your corner, and this is the three loops. You're going to do for the first one just the regular. You would twist, twist. Loop it through. You're gonna do an increase of one into this loop. So just go ahead and add another loop like this. So this is gonna have two loops. You get to the middle one, same thing. Twist, twist, thread through, add another loop. Third one, same thing. Twist, twist, Pull through, add another loop. So your corner now, instead of having three loops, you'll have a total of six. And that causes it to lay very nicely when you do your second row. Make sure you do that on all four corners. 
The first row of the border is complete. Now you have to move on to your second row. The second row is really easy. You're just gonna do the twist knit across every loop here. And no need to increase in this row because this will be the final row. If you wanna add another row to your border to make it even thicker, totally up to you. Make sure you do an increase um, in that case, I think you would do maybe the, the four here. Just do an increase of one across the four in the corner, and that should give you enough increase to lay your blanket flat. So I'll come back when I'm done with the second row. Here is the second row now completed, and now all you have to do is bind off all your edges. So let me do a little close-up so you can see it better as I do it. Your bind off is gonna start with the loop that is the one where you started this whole row. So this is the last loop of your border. Start with this one. Take one loop, take another loop, thread this one through here, just like that. And then you repeat. Take this one, thread it through that one, like this. Take this loop and thread it through here. You're gonna complete that all across the edge of your blanket. I wanna show you how to end the bind off on my actual blanket since I haven't done it yet because I want to show you on the video. So this is the last bind off right here. This is the last loop. I was trying different things and you could totally see the break in the bind off. So I, what I came up with, I don't even know if this is right to do, but you know what? It looks fine to me and you can do it too. So this first loop that you did the bind off on, this loop, this, not both of them, just this one. I thread this through like this, take the loop out, take this tail yarn, and then I'm gonna thread it through here. And when I did that, it looked pretty good, right? And you can't see that it ended. And then with this tail, you go to the back of the blanket. So let me get the back of the blanket right here. And you just thread it through some spots. Like this, like this, maybe one more, like this. And look, look how nice that looks. Can't see where it ends, it's seamless. So, I hope you like this part because even though it's probably not right, it works for me and it's gonna work for you. The last thing I want to show you was how to finish off when you joined two balls of yarn or two different colors. So you're gonna have these two tail ends here. What you're gonna have to do is release these loops so that it becomes one long piece of yarn for both of these colors or the same color. And then you have to tie these together and weave in the ends. So if you never worked with loop yarn before, these loops are held together by a little piece of string right in the middle. So do you see that right there? That right there, you'll have to snip that. And then when it releases, it becomes one long piece of yarn. So let's see, I'll cut this for you and you can see that happen. And here you go. So one long piece of yarn. So you'll do that with this color also. Here you go. And then just tie these together. Just like that. And then you'll just weave in Probably you want to weave it in like this and then weave it in. You could probably cut these off. Weave it in like this. And then you'll have the two joined together. So here's the finished blanket. Sorry, I don't know how to style blankets very well. So I literally just like threw it over my couch so you could see what the whole thing looks like. I used six balls of yarn in total. 
three in gray, dark gray that is, and which is the middle parts of the blanket, and then two in cream. And the border color, just one ball of yarn, is almond. So this blanket is super warm. I've been using it the last couple of days. It's really nice. It's also super plush and super soft. So I'm just waiting for my kids to steal this from me because they love soft blankets. I hope you enjoyed today's tutorial. Thank you for watching and I'll see you next time on Crafting With You.